When your ship is hit below the waterline, an investigation or listing shows flooded compartments, you've got to take action. Loose water in a flooded compartment is particularly dangerous. The greater the angle of list, the greater the loss of stability. Flooded compartments have sunk ships. When water enters a ship, only one compartment may be flooded at first, but after any damage, progressive flooding may develop. A bulkhead or deck failure, or any fitting that's left open, may allow progressive flooding to continue unchecked. The first step is to set up watertight boundaries. Then you may either counter flood or, after making urgent repairs, unwater. Even when the decision is to counter flood, you must eventually unwater. Get it out, either up and over the side or through outlets provided in the hull, or get it down through the drainage system. This film shows the two general types of unwatering equipment, the permanently installed drainage equipment and the auxiliary portable equipment, and how each is used. The permanent installation includes steam or air-driven reciprocating pumps motor-driven centrifugal pumps, and inductors installed in the latest types of most combatant vessels. These inductors are energized by water from the fire main or from available drainage pumps. Drainage facilities can be operated hydraulically from remote control boards installed on the newer ships. These controls make it possible to unwater inaccessible compartments. Every ship is equipped with several independent drainage systems. The main drainage system usually serves the engineering spaces and adjacent areas. The secondary drainage system drains those areas forward and aft of the area served by the main drainage system. Its pumps are smaller than those operating the main drains. Gravity drains are also part of the drainage system. These may drain the water overboard above the water line or may send the water to lower spaces where the main or secondary systems operate. The main condenser circulating pumps have large capacities, but their only possible use for drainage is limited to the engine room bilges. Approximately 5,000 gallons per minute is the total installed capacity of the main and secondary drainage system on the newest cruisers. However, this capacity cannot be concentrated on any single flooded space. By comparison, a hole only a foot square and 15 feet below the waterline will admit nearly 14,000 gallons per minute. The installed main drainage system alone can't handle this quantity of water. When this happens, you have to break out the portable pumping equipment. Every ship has an allowance of portable pumping equipment. The list includes P500 pumps, handy billy pumps, portable electric submersible pumps, inductors, and even buckets for a last resort old-fashioned bucket brigade. Now let's take up each item in turn and see its capabilities, limitations, and applications. The portable electric submersible pump can be handled by one or two men. This pump consists of a solid brass case enclosing an electric motor of either 220 or 440 volt AC or DC rating, a rotating impeller, a strainer, and seals which keep the water out of the motor. Water enters the intake, passes through the impeller, circulates around the motor housing to cool it, and is discharged through a two and a half inch hose connection at the top. A lowering line is always used on the pump 
so that no strain will be put on the power cable. Plenty of slack is allowed. Before connecting the hose line, be sure there is a gasket in the fitting. To avoid clogging the pump strainer, a wire strainer basket provided with a bale or lowering line should be made up for use with each pump using quarter inch screen. The basket should be small enough to pass through a scuttle. The strainer bale should be lashed to the discharge hose or the two lowering lines can be married together. The most efficient type of strainer is a fluted design of perforated metal. It replaces the pump strainer and is attached by means of a threaded ring inside the strainer near the bottom. At a discharge head of 50 feet, the pump will deliver 140 gallons per minute. Overboard discharge connections can be used to get the water out through the hull. The use of these connections means lower static heads, increased volume of discharge, and shorter hose lines. When the pump is submerged, it will prime itself. Close the switch. Keep the discharge hose clear of kinks. If the flow is blocked, the pressure will rupture the seals and short circuit the motor. Never use a nozzle or any fitting at the discharge end. Free flow will assure maximum performance of the pump. Every portable pump on the ship should be tested once a week. An ordinary trash can may be used. An electrician's mate should go over the wiring frequently to make sure it's in good condition. The limitations of portable electric submersible pumps should be borne in mind. The power line should never be used in handling or lowering the pump. A basket type strainer should be made for each pump to eliminate the possibility of clogging. The water seal should be checked frequently and replaced to avoid short circuits in the motor. A free discharge must be maintained. Nozzles should never be used. The pump should be used for water only. Other liquids such as oil and gasoline will impair proper cooling of the motor. For heads of over 50 feet, the discharge from one submersible can be connected to another at a higher level. This series hookup may solve an otherwise tough problem. One pump will unwater a solidly flooded 10 foot by 10 foot compartment in 30 to 45 minutes. The submersible pump is a valuable piece of unwatering equipment because it is reliable, efficient and versatile. The gasoline Handy Billy is another portable pump. It weighs about 93 pounds and has a capacity of 60 gallons per minute. While not primarily an unwatering pump, it may be used as such. The Handy Billy takes a two inch non-collapsible suction hose and a one and a half inch discharge hose. An open nozzle must be used on the discharge to create back pressure so that the engine will not be damaged by running at excessive speed. The Handy Billy is a rotary pump, self-priming. The engine is water-cooled. It should never be allowed to run without pumping. The fuel is a mixture of gasoline and a small amount of lubricating oil. If the pump must be used below decks, the exhaust hose should be run to outside air. Portable ventilating ducts should be used to avoid accumulation of carbon monoxide gas. The Handy Billy, though small, can be very helpful in unwatering. The portable P500 pump is similar to the Handy Billy, but has a larger capacity. 500 gallons per minute at 100 pounds gauge pressure. This centrifugal pump is driven by a four-cylinder, two-cycle, water-cooled engine. Like the Handy Billy, it burns a mixture of gasoline and oil. The P500 discharges through two two and a half inch hoses and takes suction from a four inch hard rubber suction hose. A combination strainer and foot valve assembly is used on the lower end of the suction hose. The exhaust gases are carried off by an exhaust line which is kept cool by a small amount of water from the pump. 
the pump has to be primed before starting. Bucket priming is necessary when the suction lift exceeds 16 feet, as is the case when adductors are used with the pump. Normally, the P500 is not operated below decks. As in the case of the handy billy, if it is used in enclosed spaces, special ventilation measures must be taken. If the exhaust hose rises over 30 feet, the water in it will stall the pump. The discharge pressure regulator can be adjusted to the setting desired. This pressure will be maintained automatically whether the pump is delivering partial or full capacity. Tri gates are used to bring the flow up to full capacity. Signals are used to prevent too rapid a drop in pressure. The fourth nozzle is only partially opened. Operation of the pump in this manner drops the pressure to about 35 to 40 pounds. The pump does not operate properly below this pressure. There are a few limitations to be noted in using the P500. One is that ventilation is necessary in enclosed spaces to avoid the dangers of carbon monoxide gas. Another point is that a fuel mixture of gasoline and oil must be used. A third is that the exhaust line rise is limited to avoid accumulation of water. Also, maneuverability is limited because of the size and weight of the gear. However, in spite of these limitations, the P500 pump is a very useful piece of equipment, not only by itself, but also in conjunction with other gear. The adductor is still another portable pump. This type is indispensable in unwatering. It is a jet pump energized by water normally at a hundred pound pressure from the fire main or from a pump. The adductor receives its water supply from a two and a half inch hose. The water passes through a nozzle, creating a very high vacuum in the chamber. Suction is taken through an inlet equipped with a strainer and a foot valve. The outlet is to a four inch discharge hose. If 250 gallons per minute are fed to the adductor, 250 gallons per minute will be picked up by the suction. The discharge will then total 500 gallons per minute. Volume is of course reduced as the static head is increased. Two men can usually handle the connections at the adductor. All connections should be tightened with a spanner. Other members of the party handle the heavy discharge hose, which is easier to lower from topside than to raise from below. The Perry jet is a newer form of adductor. It operates by the same principle, but offers several advantages. The Perry jet has six small replaceable plastic nozzles instead of one larger one. This design opens a clear path which allows small objects to be carried through without blocking the flow. The nozzles form a cone of water which creates a vacuum of approximately 29 inches. The hose connections are the same size as on the adductor. A suction hose may be attached. No strainer is needed. The Perijet is energized by feed water at 100 to 125 pounds pressure. It pulls better than gallon for gallon. For example, 225 gallons per minute will pick up over 300 gallons per minute for a total discharge of over 525 gallons per minute. The fire main is a good source for the 100 pound pressure needed. Any pump that will deliver 250 gallons per minute at 100 pounds pressure will serve the purpose. Operating a Perijet in a demonstration setup 
will give you an idea of what this pump will do. Almost any small compressible object will pass through it. At any convenient point on the discharge line, a quick release valve is provided for use if the opening becomes blocked. The reverse flow clears the suction opening and pumping is resumed immediately. The Perijet is an efficient and useful gear for any type of unwatering problem involving high static heads or debris that may prove troublesome with other types of pumps. The P500 works well in combination with adductors increasing the lift of the pump. For example, one adductor can be used as a booster for the P500 when the lift is over 16 feet and the discharge is to be used for firefighting. One of the pump discharge lines puts 250 gallons per minute into the adductor, which is rigged to the lower end of a four inch suction line. The suction picks up 250 gallons from the compartment, making a total of 500 gallons per minute. The other discharge line delivers 250 gallons per minute, the quantity being removed from the compartment. In effect, you use recirculation to raise the water higher than the pump working alone will raise it. Another combination uses two adductors with the P500. If there is contaminated water in the compartment, you rig the P500 suction line to take seawater. Contamination such as oil reduces the cooling and may seriously damage the P500 engine. Working with a head of say 45 feet, the two discharges, 250 gallons each, each pick up 150 gallons per minute from the compartment. The total discharge is thus equal to 800 gallons per minute. Of course, 500 of this is from the sea, so you're only getting 300 out of the compartment. You can take the suction from the compartment if the water is not contaminated. Then you'll be pulling the full 800 gallons per minute from the compartment. With combinations like these, you can lick almost any unwatering problem. When faced with flooding, attack the problem logically. First, set up flooding boundaries. Second, restore water tightness by plugging all leaks. Third, pump out, giving priority to loose water and higher compartments. Fourth, work from the fringes toward the center of damage. The answer to progressive flooding is progressive unwatering. Learn all there is to know about the installed and portable equipment and the methods of unwatering flooded compartments and put that knowledge into practice. It's too late to learn after flooding starts.